lounging, son. Welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name is Ryan, and today I'm going to be covering some Cross Chain comics with Cross Chain Chronicles number one, the launch book. One of my favorite pop comic book publishers from the 2000s. Before I get into it, I just want to say if you're already subscribed to the channel, thank you so much. We appreciate all the support. But if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Join us on this awesome comic book journey of going through whether it's indie stuff, stuff from the big publishers, interviews, all that good stuff, and a bunch of dope content on the channel. We drop them every single day. So hit that subscribe button, and now let's get into this book, Cross Chain Chronicles number one. This was a comic book publisher that, you know, had the had their beginnings start in 1998 and they have a timeline that ran through some of the early cross chain books talking about like how it was created um and in turn kind of what came from that 2000 june of 2000 is when this their first official publication i would say i think cross genesis i think preceded that it was a one shot i think it had some promo stuff in it i've never been able to secure a copy so I'm not entirely sure what was in that book. This is the beginning. And, you know, it's Ron Mars, Barbara Kiesel, Claudio Castellini, Cesar Rodriguez, Andrew Crossley, Mike Atea. This is what births, in my opinion, one of one of the best comic book companies in the 2000s. I mean, you know, for good or for bad, say, you know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, there's always going to be differing opinions. But this is really like the, you know, the brainchild of Mark Alessi and and Gina Villa and they created this whole idea of a connected universe and you know all of their main characters as you can see from the cover all are branded with this sigil and in turn you know you're seeing the opposing forces kind of looks like a yin yang and it's you know you got the I would say more of the dark more of the good and we're introduced immediately by these two opposing forces red and yellow and they represent the first and these are a race of gods and you can see from you know their outfits like they'll have half the sigil you know the red and then they have the yellow well you're not really give you don't really know their names um so i'm gonna basically go into this as like you don't really know much even though i've read the majority of this entire company's publishing so we're you know we're meeting them and you know something is happening that's keeping them that's bringing them together and, you know, each accusing one of being responsible for it. She tell, she talks to the older guy, right? And she's like, you know, come on, we need you to show him. So, like, he's using his powers and he uses it in a way to show that, you know, these people, these they have little in common to them except they've been granted this symbol. And then from there, we are going to be introduced to, there's five sigil bearers. Each on different planets, they, they're not connected, like it says, but anything... But, they're not connected by anything except for this symbol. And, you know, going back and reading it, they're, and knowing kind of where it goes, little characters like this will have orange eyes. And that'll play, that'll be something to keep an eye out for throughout the cross Chain comic books. But, you know, we meet, we meet Giselle. She's just been given this brand. And this, these events also take place a little bit in the future from where the original series will launch. So she's already gotten the symbol. We see Genevieve, her sister comes out. You know, what have you done? You've ruined my ascension. And she was going to, you know, become one of the masters because this is a planet in a world that is rife with magic. And now, for, for us, we don't know what, what's happened, right? She's received something. She's received all of them, all of the spirits of these, you know, ascended masters. And she has no idea how it happened. You know, of all the titles, I would definitely say that she leans kind of more into like what was, I think, popular at this, you know, at the time. There's a lot of like, you know, the Bad Girl comics, I think, you know, Dawn, Witchblade, Lady Death, all that stuff. And she definitely fits into that category more from her design, at least her initial design. And, you know, you're seeing this relationship between the two sisters. She obviously wanted nothing to do with magic. And, she, you know, Genevieve, her sister, is like, I don't understand why you do this. You know how much it meant to me. They leave each other mad, right? Like Genevieve walks off pissed. She's like, you know, just stop it. And then you see Giselle kind of seeing like, well, how does she have these powers? What happened? That little like creature is like, says something. She's like, wait, did you just talk? And then we, we are instantly transported back to these gods who are, you know, I don't know if I mentioned it. 
the first, right? That's their race. So now we're going to be transported to another world. Now we're going to meet uh, Samando Ray and, you know, Sam for short. And we're seeing Roya who something has happened to her. And again, we don't know why. He also bears the mark of the sigil. He's distraught that, she, that, you know, that he wasn't there for her to protect her. And then as this is happening and he's contemplating, you know, he's just sitting there in his own head and he doesn't understand what this thing happened on his chest. The, the, his ship's being attacked. And it's being attacked by this other race called the Saurians. And this is basically what these two, you know, the Saurians and the humans are at war with each other. This is like more of a sci-fi, you know, space opera types of story. Whereas the other one is, you know, fantasy, magic. So we see that we meet the rest of the cast, uh, cast of that book. Jameric. We meet uh, Zaniati. Meet another guy where it's not as noticeable. He's got orange eyes too. So Sam's going to take over the ship and when he puts the headset on, he's talking to Roya and he doesn't understand how it's possible. Roya has now been connected to the ship. Something has happened to where she, her body, her physical body is not, is in a state, in almost in a coma-like stasis. And then, you know, we see the flashback to, you know, like he's affected by this as he's looking back and he doesn't know why, but something's hidden from them and they're being blocked from watching. And so now they're going to another world, and this is going to be the, we're meeting Ethan, he's just fought this dude, Braun, who again, we're watching two opposing, two opposing houses. This is kind of more the fantasy, uh, you know, sword and sorcery type book. We see his, you know, his, his friend, he's like, you know, don't blame yourself, you know, he didn't mean it. And what's happening is he started this East and West War, because they're, you know, you don't know it going into this but it's a tournament and usually their wounds can be healed but he's now attacked him with this wound that can't be healed and we're gonna see why did that happen and he also has been marked with the sigil as well the east and west have been in had a truce for years but because of this it's now gonna send them into a catastrophic war and we see what he's done to Braun with this scar Fuck, he's pissed he's you know and it ends with him choking him out saying i'll have your life and then they're gonna go to one more world and there's not one sigil bear there's two here we meet the floating city of meridian we see another orange eyed character soon soon like so she's prophesizing something we meet Sefi. her mark is on her head but she's not the only one her uncle bears the mark too and something to note here, and there's a reason you'll find it out in Meridian, is that his tends to lean more to the red and hers tends to lean more to the yellow. So why is that? So it's the way they draw on their powers. And while normally it's a perfect balance for them when they have it, their personalities tend to lean more one way or the other, which is why his tend to be red and hers yellow. And he's trying to keep her hidden. Her dad has just died. You know, hide your mark. If the people knew what we could do, well, it's just better they don't. So remember, keep it a secret. It's a family secret. And so he takes his leave. He His power is destroyed. Hers gave new life to it, even though it's an inanimate object. And all the while, this old lady is watching all this take place. And again, she's saying soon. So now, he, and then he even says, you know, this. we go back to the gods. And he says, there are others. But we've seen enough for now. The marks all of them bear equal forces in opposition they mirror our own and they have no idea how it happened and now you know they're saying like we might have to deal with them at some point and so they each go on their separate ways but as they do we meet one from the darker side and one from the light side and again we don't know the names of the first yet that'll be revealed to us more in the future and so we see that they you know they love each other right but they're on opposing forces while there is a peace between them they each have their own motives for and how they live their life but we're gonna see this great moment at the end where he's like i don't know a thing like this has never happened before after this nothing's ever going to be the same and it's true because what's going to take place moving forward is nothing short of amazing awesome comic books great storytelling um you know cross gen we're going to meet the, you know, the whole team of CrossGen and it was an interesting idea what they did, you know, like they had a headquarters in Florida and everybody that worked on these books moved there and worked basically on 
kind of like a campus, you know, like a bullpen, t- kind of to mirror Marvel. And so we're going to meet the whole creative teams of Mystic and Scion and Sigil, Meridian. And there's going to be more stuff to come. But these are the four launch books. We meet, you know, Mark Alessi, who is the CEO and publisher, Gina Vila, and head of production. Ron Mars is the senior writer. Barbara Kiesel is head writer. And they are both going to be the launches. And then we get a little pre sneak preview of Mystic and the whole spiel about that book. And then we get Sigil. We get Scion. And we get Meridian. And all of these are phenomenal. I love a lot of the back matter they throw in their books too. You know, you get to see how do they make the cross gen books. And then it breaks it down by title. And we see it from penciler to inks to colors. Get some behind the scenes photos of cross gen. Meet the rest of the people that are on the production team. So very cool. We get a letter from Mark, you know, talking about over the last nine to 12 months, he's been fortunate to participate. And what he believes will go down in comic book publishing history is the jumpstart of a new renaissance in comic book publishing, the debut of CrossGen. While this didn't last forever, in my opinion, it produced some of the greatest comic books of the early 2000s. I love them. You know, I like I said, I own most of them. This isn't going to be the last episode I do. I uh, just wanted to quickly flip through this CrossGen Chronicles number one. And I'm very excited to go through the rest of the titles. Um, I will be going through them in chunks. I'm going to hit the first four launch series first. So if you're a fan of CrossGen, please, please stick with me on this ride. I'm, I plan to go through a lot of these great titles and to see what they become, even though they were left open-ended and they were never finished. I still hold out hope that maybe, maybe one day we might get to see those stories finished. And that's a pipe dream, but I'm not going to give up hope. So hope you enjoyed this. If you haven't checked out CrossGen, go check them out. They're super easy to find. I uh, hope you'd stick with me on this CrossGen journey and make sure you like, follow, and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified every time a new vid drops. And on that note, I'm out.